Alderman, do are all the documents signed? Everybody's committees? No, I don't have them all. Before we get started with the meeting, Mr. Franzen's here. Would you step up the microphone? He just wants to address the flag box that's placed up by City Hall. Go ahead, Lee. Uh, I got this idea from our state newsletter to DFW, and I proceeded to get a mailbox from the post office, and then I went to Mr. Schramm to see about putting it someplace, and we had quite a discussion where to go, and I finally went to Community Bank, and they gave me permission to put it down there. And I had some posters made up like this, which I'm going to be putting around the city at convenient locations. Uh, so people, to remind people of where to put their flags, old flags, retired flags. There are a lot of flags being flown in the city right now that are worn, torn, that should be replaced. And uh, Sheboygan Press was good enough to put an ad in the paper, and it's turned out to be very good results. The first week we collected about 150 flags. To date we got, uh, I would say roughly about 230, 240 flags that we have collected out of the box so far. And I wanted to thank the mayor for letting me come here tonight just to show this. He has one that is going to be put in City Hall, and his wife has got one to put it to Y. And I have a couple of them at Washington Square, Piggly Wiggly, and one out at Sheboygan Falls. I put one out to Walmart so far. Park and save and pick and save, and there will be a few more that will be distributed. I just started on this this last week. So I would appreciate all of you people to continue to let the people know, and hoping maybe we get an article in the press at a later date sometime, again, showing what to do with the flags. Thank you. Could you leave a few extra copies for us? Yeah, I and I think some of the aldermen will probably take them with. If you yeah. leave one to alderman in the back, please. I can leave you about four of them. Super. Alderman Warner, would you take those, please, for us? So we have them. Here's five of them. That's all I have to say. Just want to thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you for the help in getting it started. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, Pat, well said. Okay. We will call the notice of the 20th regular meeting to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Dberg? Here. Eberg? Here. Doyle? Here. Manny? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Quartz? Here. Schultz? Here. Stephan? Here. D. Van Akron? Here. T. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangeman? Excused. Warner? Here. Wenninger? Yeah. 15 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the minutes of the previous council be uh, be accepted as entered on the record. Move to second that the minutes of the previous council meeting be approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of Allegiance, we have two young gentlemen from St. Luke's with us tonight from Troop 805. Would you lead us, please, in a pledge? I would guess you two are here for a merit badge this evening, or work? Yeah. Which one is that? Communication. Communication. Okay, excellent. Thank you for coming. Hearing, Pat, that's been canceled? Well, you can just state it on TV then. Okay. The hearing schedule for rezoning property located at 1212 Pennsylvania Avenue has been canceled for this evening. Resignation, Steve. Uh, there's a letter dated December 10th to uh, Mr. Richard Meyer of the Business Improvement District 
from Kerry Rowerdink advising that he needs to resign from the Harbor Center bid board uh, because he sold his business and no longer eligible to be on the board of directors. That we can accept and file. And uh, <clears throat> this is dated today. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Greg Wegeman to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Kerry Rauer, Inc., whose term expires 9-1704, signed by the mayor. That lies over. Okay, public forum, Pat? No one. Okay, Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I would move that all ROs be accepted and filed, all committee reports be accepted and filed, all ROs, I mean all committee reports be accepted and adopted, all resolutions be put upon their passage. Been moved and seconded, all ROs be accepted and filed, all RCs be accepted and adopted, and resolutions be put upon their passage, except, except 2013. If you look at that, that will be referred to finance. Alderman Moody. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. No need to pull it, but on 12-4, on I'm just questioning why do we have this document referring to Kohler General and Kohler Generals in Falls? I think we had one on the last council docket, too. Which one is that? 24. 12-4. 24. Or 24, I'm sorry, 24. <laughs> I receive these uh, notifications from the court and from the state, and when they come here, I don't pay attention where the company's located. We've always submitted them to council. Somebody else is, can enlighten me. I mean, what action do we take? We don't take any action. It's a piece of information because of the, I would imagine the um, laying off of people. You know, um, okay. there are people without jobs now, so the city right. is always made aware when industries go out of business and we have a big influx of unemployment. That's my understanding. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I believe they do have a division that's in the industrial park right on the corner of um, Taylor Drive and right, right where Crocker, I believe. Crocker, that's it. I think they do have a vision, division okay. and a building in, in, that are in the city limits there. Yes. Thank you. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. On 2021, um, I'm, I don't need to pull that for a separate vote. I just want to comment on a portion of that. Uh, the number two item on there, it's an RO. Uh, it comes from finance. From uh, The RO is from Partners for Community Development, Inc., stating they will be applying for community block grant funds in 2003. Uh, Mr. Fuentes serves on the Civil Service Commission. In the past, I've sat in on some of their discussions, and from my observations, I believe he has served the city very well and has the best interests of the city of Sheboygan at heart. I did feel uncomfortable during some of our discussions last April when they were being criticized uh, and some of the things that, uh, and ac accusations that had been made. He sent all of us a letter and several pieces of correspondence indicating that all issues have been resolved and closed at this time. And that correspondence and a, a, a folder from partners, uh, their um, annual report, uh, I, I think it's worth reading. Uh, partners may have been unfairly criticized before all issues were investigated. We need to be very careful about how we present our arguments so as not to create a situation that could be considered libelous. Mike Hutz has some information concerning training um, of, on code of ethics, which for those of us that have been on a council for a while could use a refresher on, and the newer people, some initial training. I'd like to ask Mike to maybe um, tell us about that or touch on that training that available. Uh, I believe Alderman Schultz is referring to two notice of claims uh, that are in the uh, risk management docket yet. Uh, one notice of claim from partners and one from Mr. Fuentes. Uh, as several years ago, probably more than several years ago, I, there might have been three or four of you here. We had some training put on through Cities and Villages Mutual, training for all the aldermen regarding liability, code of ethics under our, our code, which I believe is Chapter 2 of the Municipal Code. And then I think in the state statutes, I believe it's Chapter 19. 
we haven't done that for quite a few years. And uh, I could set that up again. I believe I, I had spoken to uh, Alderman Van Akron as chairman of the Committee of the Whole about the possibility of setting up that, that training sometime in the future, probably about an hour worth of training put on by the cities and villages people, which I will do at, at a future meeting uh, when you call a uh, Committee of the Whole meeting. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, everything from 20, 21 through 2029, excluding 2013, will be put upon its passage. Pat, would you call the roll, please? D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Ports, Aye. Schultz, Stephan, D. Van Akron, T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Aye. Warner, Aye. Weininger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 2030 to be referred. The two ROs, 2031 and 32, by the city clerk submitting a communication from Mark Hessler requesting withdrawal of his rezoning for 1212 Pennsylvania Avenue and the City Plan Commission recommending filing documents. Those can be accepted and placed on file. Alderman Warner. Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion uh, we place the documents on file. Move to second that we file the two ROs under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 20, 33, and 34 lie over. 2035 through 45 to be referred. 2046 through 48 will lie over. 2049 through 53 to be referred. 2054. By public protection and safety, recommending denying beverage operators license 5857 based on findings of committee. Is that the one you want to speak on? Mm -hmm. There is a corrected document, I believe, on all the alderman's desks. Uh, Thank you. Alderman, alderman Doyle. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Uh, I move that uh, the RC be adopted and, uh, and approved, but I'd like to check first to see if uh, Mr. Zeman is here uh, to speak in his behalf. He apparently isn't. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? No, I need a Roll call. Okay. Eberg. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Manny. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Ports. Aye. Schultz. Aye. Stephan. D. Van Akron, T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Aye. Warner, Weininger, Bauman, D. Bird. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 2055 and 56 will lie over. 1919, resolution by Alderman Schultz and T. Van Akron and Berg authorizing entering to a contract for obtain, obtaining employment, employment practices liability insurance. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to resolution be put upon this passage. Second. Move to the second resolution be put upon this passage. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Doyle. Aye. Manny. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Ports, Aye. Schultz, Aye. Stephan, Aye. D. Van Akron, Aye. T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Aye. Warner, Aye. Weininger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. Before we get into the other matters, I would like to back up for a moment. I, I missed this. This morning I got an email from Alderman Warner, and he just requested that... Uh, we make it known that his nephew through marriage, Alderman Warner, is that? Yes, Your Honor. Nathan Hare has not been found yet. And that the general public who's ever watching this evening, if you check your yards, your garages, your sheds, whatever you have, 
look around uh, and just, just look around your your area and if, if you would see something please let him know we don't have a picture of him uh, alderman warner uh, i wish we did we could put it on camera but we don't have a picture of him this evening but was ever watching andy alderman and all department heads if you just walk around your yards and just look in any buildings or anything on your property please notify alderman warner immediately if you would find them so thank you Okay, other matters, 2057, we'll go to finance. 2058 to finance. 2059, resolution by Alderman Schultz, T. Van Ackenberg authorizing the retaining of outside counsel in federal and state court for Tempest case. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to resolution. I need to ask for suspension. Okay. It's been moved and second for suspension. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. With that, I make a resolution. I make a motion the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and seconded. Resolution be put upon its passage. Is there discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll? Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Horitz? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? No. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Van Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Weninger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle. Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried, Steve. 2060 is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute the joint powers agreement for Sheboygan County and City of Sheboygan 911 emergency systems. That will go to public protection and safety. 2061 is a communication from Alderman Schultz submitting a list of contributors to Terry Van Akron's state campaign. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'd like to read this communication. It, it pertains expressly to Order, Your our Honor. meeting this, is this evening. Being, is this being referred or is this? Yes. Do we discuss referred documents on the floor then tonight? Is it our policy? Generally not. Generally not, but it has been done. It has been done. I'm good, so. What is our rules? Asking. The rules are not correct. I don't think the rules say one way or another whether there can be discussion on a particular item before there's a referral. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Before I get into it, this uh, cover for the communication, it should read addressing the ambulance service. That's really what the communication is. Um, I've talked to the city clerk. I will stop in her office tomorrow, and she's going to make a new cover Maybe. for it, and I'll sign that. And uh, it'll be uh, stated the way it really should be. With that, um, I would like to read the communication. Uh, this communication is not going to make me any friends, um, but I think it says some things that need to be said. I have no malicious intent in this. I want to make that perfectly clear. With that, uh, I would like to read the communication. It is about the ambulance service contract, Orange Cross versus other. About last July, about last July, after meeting between some city officials and county officials for discussion about ambulance service, I said to the mayor, I think if you wanted a contract with Orange Cross, you could have one today. After more discussion and some time passed, I said we are going to make this contract so difficult Orange Cross will not be able to sign it, and here we are today. Two weeks ago, Alderman Van Akron said in several minutes, basically, we offered them the same contract and they refused to sign it. I am not sure it is the contract so much as it is the distrust that has been created between Orange Cross and the city. The city keeps putting new challenges to Orange Cross. First it was, first first it was response time. Once that was somewhat diffused, someone put together a spreadsheet questioning on-site time. That is how long the ambulance was on-site before transporting. One reason the city went with an ambulance service was that our then police ambulance could not provide paramedic level service. They basically would load and run. Now the paramedics are able to provide a level of treatment on site and they are criticized for not being en route to the hospital sooner. It is not so much contract changes as it is no one trusts or respects anyone anymore. We need to reestablish the mutual respect and trust that we once had for each other. 
the citizens I talk with want the ambulance service to remain with Orange Cross. In strategic fiscal plan meetings, the fire department is represented by the chief and or his deputy chiefs to discuss the proposed ambulance contract and offer suggestions. Closed sessions meetings, the fire department is represented, but Orange Cross is excluded. As long as the fire department is actively interested in providing the ambulance service, they should be treated as any other contractor interested in doing business with the city. They should not be part of developing a contract for a competitor they want to replace. I believe Chairman of the Strategic Fiscal Plan Committee, Alderman Terry Van Akron, should have excused himself from all discussion of the ambulance contract to avoid any perception of influence. There is a website listing campaign contributions through August 26, 2002. The final report is not due until July 31, 2003. Attached is a listing of fire department personnel from Green Bay to Fond du Lac to Sheboygan and labor union individuals. Individuals I believe are sympathetic to the fire department being awarded the ambulance service. How do I know they are sympathetic? Union leader Ben Coonert has attended several strategic fiscal plan committee meetings. As recent as the me meeting Monday, January 6th, he stated, I don't know why you are talking with Orange Cross when you have the fire department to provide ambulance service. While the police department had the ambulance service, there was not one recorded lost time or workman's compensation injury. Total to date, Sheboygan has incurred workman's comp injuries involving firemen responding as first responders totaling $200,000. The most, in, most recent being $50,000. No other first responders have similar records. If the fire department were to be awarded the ambulance service and first responders, what would be the effect on the city's workman's comp claims? Would the city need additional paramedics to replace injured paramedics? And at what cost? The fire chief says he can take on the ambulance service with only adding three personnel. Yet he has consistently said he needs more personnel because staffing does not meet NFPA, National Fire Prevention Association, recommended levels. We have had an ambulance service with no cost or risk to the property taxpayer and providing paramedic level service that the public seems more than satisfied with. I believe the fire department could provide an equal level of service, but along with a large startup cost, a huge risk to the property taxpayer of providing a subsidy along with providing a subsidy to the county for ambulance service, as we are approximately 42% of the county. Going out with an RFP request for proposal is not the answer either, as we had a very unpleasant experience with that once with Curtis Ambulance Service. I don't think we want to go through that again. My concern is this. Orange Cross is being challenged on so many issues, a good working relationship will be difficult to maintain, and the ambulance service will go to the fire department by default. This would be unfortunate. We have many other financial challenges ahead of us, such as a new police station, stormwater management, South Pier development, loss of state revenues, city development and redevelopment, street paving, repaving, annual health care costs exceeding $4 million. Strategic Fiscal Plan Committee still has not met to discuss and prioritize the suggestions of the budget reduction survey most of us completed in September. This needs to be done. Signed, Val Schultz, Alderman, 5th District, January 20th, 2003. Thank you. Your Honor, to follow the correct rules of the council, I would move that we file this. We have a motion before us to file the document. Is there any discussion? Your Honor, under, under discussion, um, I don't know how we held discussion without having a a uh, document on the floor to discuss, so that's why my motion to file this. Um, starting out with, to answer, as long as we're gonna discuss this, let's discuss it and get it over with. Um, I disagree with Val in his third paragraph where he says Orange Cross uh, Fire Department and his deputy chiefs were in closed sessions. So, so were many of our department heads. The fire department's not our adversary or not our, they're part of the city of Sheboygan. And, and so was Orange Cross. When we made the decision back, I believe it was in August, September sometime, that we were going to not go with the fire department and go with Orange Cross, we dropped that. And from that point on, we were discussing Orange Cross contract. 
Uh, we sat with many times with Orange Cross in those in those discussions and outside. That's what contract negotiations and how they work. You don't tip your hand to the people you're trying to, to work out a contract with. But we did sit with them and go line for line for line, as I said last time, with Orange Cross in the meetings. So we didn't exclude them from all closed session meetings. Uh, they were included in, in some of them. Did we have some closed sessions with all of them? Sure we do. We do that when, we, when we're when we in uh, contract negotiation with our own employees, we do that. We do that when we have closed sessions, when we have uh, negotiations with developers to discuss our uh, wants and needs of the contracts. So this isn't unusual, this is no conspiracy. We got away from the idea that, that we were gonna have this be a uh, fire department run, we made that decision. The decision this council did was to go on and say, try to work out a deal with Orange Cross and bring it back to the council. That's what happened and that's what we're currently doing. I do take offense to the fact that he then goes to the next thing, to the next item and says that I should have excused myself. Steve, is it illegal or, or anything wrong with uh, heading the committee um, under the state statutes or under my, my receiving money from any contributors to my campaign, either as an alderman or here? Not that I'm aware of. Would it be not doing my duty to step out of, of that position? I since I don't so. have I any con so. conflict, correct? Right, your duty as an alderman and as chairman is to uh, handle the duties that are assigned to that committee. That's what I'm doing. Now, I at least think I have enough respect for most of the colleagues here on the floor to believe that I have been openly and honestly trying to do the best job of what I feel for the city. Do we have some disagreements? Sure. Um, but I don't think I should excuse myself. So I'm professional enough that if I feel something's right, I'm going to turn to the fire department and say no. I'm going to turn to DPW and say no. Um, that's not an issue. My job here is to be an alderman and do it in that, in that way. Um, I do take exception to the fact that um, he thinks that I should have had to excuse myself because of people that support me. Um, all of us have been supported by people in this community. Most of us have been supported by people in this community. Um, and I don't, think, I don't take exception to that. I, I, I'm proud of that fact that I have people that will support me and believe in the same things I do. That doesn't mean they own me and it doesn't mean that I always agree with them. It means that I agree with and I'm willing to listen to them. Um, if, if there's a problem with that, I have no problem with that. I'm professional enough to handle that. Um, Back on to Orange Cross's contract. Um, while we have had many discussions, we've always been open to Orange Cross or anybody else stepping forward, uh, giving us input, including our own people, including outside labor people. We've had people from the chamber that have given us input. Um, I've had people on my committee that are f executive uh, people from p the Physicians Network. Um, you've got to be open to all inputs. I don't think we should be singling out one set of people and not listen to them because they may have a vested interest. Everybody has a vested interest in this, in this issue, and I think it's time that we start to put this behind us um, and get this over with. This has been a long, drawn-out thing. It's been an emotional issue for a lot of people. It's been trying on both our fire department, the aldermen here, the city, Orange Cross, and everybody. Um, but I don't think there's anybody here, and I take, again, I take exception to the fact, I don't think anybody here has a hidden agenda or any specific um, thing that they're trying to do all outside of what's best for the city of Sheboygan. I believe that on all of you. Thank you. Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, and I'll be brief. I'll try to be brief anyway. I've got a lot of documents on Orange Cross and, and the negotiations we've gone through. I could read them all, but I won't do that. First, I believe Alderman Schultz's uh, reading of this document at tonight's meeting was not only inappropriate but unprofessional. And I would like to address some of the things he said. One, the fire department. On October 7th of last year, this common council voted to forward a contract to Orange Cross Ambulance. Not to the Sheboygan Fire Department, not to anyone else. Orange Cross turned it down. Plain and simple. And as far as labor donating to uh, Alderman Van Ackland's campaign, if they agree with him and he's the person they want to support, they should donate to it. Just as any business should donate to a candidate that they support. That's what politics is about. It's supporting your candidate and trying to help them win the election. It'd be foolish not to. And as far as firefighters getting hurt, 
I believe that's because they're helping Orange Cross do their job. If firefighters didn't have to help them do their job and make Orange Cross better by being there to stabilize the patients before Orange Cross gets there or to drive their vehicles, our firefighters wouldn't be getting hurt. Obviously, Orange Cross is understaffed. We negotiated in good faith with Orange Cross all along, and we talked with the county and the law committee, and it was always in good faith. And the issues in this contract are almost the same as the last one, a few improvements. Orange Cross's latest proposal to us, or prior to the one that we now are looking at, dealt with two things, them using the county's radios paid for by taxpayers of the county and the city alike for nothing. That was one item in their agreement. And the other item is in their agreement was that there would be insurance for firefighters, first responders, police and sheriff deputies that drove their ambulances to help them out. That was their, their idea of a contract. We've got something going now. We should probably have a contract. But it's Orange Cross who got in the way, not this council, not our committee not Alderman Van Akron, and not myself, and not the fire department. On October 7th of this year, we put that to rest. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Schultz. Hey, thank you, Your Honor. I did uh, open this up by saying it was not going to make me any friends, and it, I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I wanted to make a strong statement to get people's attention, uh, to look at all issues, all sides, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, maybe we can get moving on this. I took great pains to uh, put this together to make no accusations of anybody doing anything illegal or anything like that. Um, and I, I also said in the beginning that I have no malicious intent to this, and I truly do not. I wanted to make a st strong statement, bring out some points, get people's attention and hopefully some consideration and, and move on. Um, I, I did uh, in my uh, communication say um, about Alderman Van Akron excusing himself uh, to avoid any perception. I didn't say that he was uh, doing anything illegal uh, or anything like that. I said to avoid any perception and uh, sometimes perception is stronger than reality and, and that's my concern. So uh, I would hope you would not file this. I would hope it would be referred to a strategic fiscal plan. Uh, I think it does need to be uh, discussed, if nothing else, if it's an active document, at least it's there in front of people. Uh, you can read it, disregard it, toss it, do whatever you want with it, but at least it's there. If you vote to file this tonight, uh, it's gone forever, and it means that you're uh, uh, downplaying it and don't put emphasis on it. Uh, and I don't think that's going to be a good public perception uh, to see the council file something as strong as this. I think it needs some uh, more consideration than just filing without any uh, review of it. Thank you. Alderman okay. Press. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a few quick comments. I, I hope that uh, Alderman Schultz doesn't take this counsel for fools, but he, the letter that he has written has some serious, serious, extremely serious implications uh, with respect to perhaps illegalities or uh, improprieties against not only our president of the council, but also our state assemblyman and fire chief, whom I respect very much. I would hope that Alderman Schultz would heed his own words when he talks about ethics. If he had any problem with any of these uh, uh, situations, he should have said so way before. I am curious as to why he's coming up with these uh, uh, statements now. He had every opportunity, just as we all did, and none of us showed any objection to Terry's being present. Alderman Stephan. Uh, yes. Um, I too would, I think we're discussing it now, we're giving it probably more weight than it deserves now. I don't know if this is Alderman Schultz's idea of going out in a blaze of glory or something that we should you know, hang out and talk about it for four months, but by filing it, we're talking about it now, whether we talk about it like Terry said, today or two weeks, it doesn't matter, we're talking about the issues. That's apparently what he wanted, so let's not discuss them. I don't think I'm violating open records laws when I tell you that you know the statement about Orange Cross and the fire department is totally untrue. Alderman Schultz was next to me in a meeting over at the courthouse between both committees. It was an open session, and it went to closed. The fire chief walked in. He said, oh, it's a closed meeting. And they said, oh, you can stay in your department. They said, not a chance. I'm out of here. It's a closed session. I'm not staying. It wasn't going to be in the closed session. Orange Cross was there. 
she decided and said, no, if it's closed, I'm leaving. He stood outside. When I left, he was still sitting outside waiting for the meeting to go back open. So I think that, you know, Alderman Schultz has to know that's not true. I, I trust that he just made a mistake. I don't think he would put it in there intentionally. I agree with Alderman Werner, you know. The fire department has continually showed us where mishaps and mistakes in communications with the first responders have caused some serious workman's comp injuries. One, they admitted to one serious one, the most serious one. They know it's, it was their fault. They know it wasn't the firefighter's fault. So, I mean, the fact that it used to cost nothing and now it would cost more, it's ludicrous. It's the turnover rate of the people you're working with that causes the more injuries. Also, if you look to the last page, you'll see my name. And I'm not ashamed to say I'm a, I'm a labor person. I'm not ashamed to say I've known Terry Van Acken for 20 years. I'm not ashamed to say I've served with him on this council and I've served with him on the county board. And why did I support him for assembly? Because I wanted him to vote for the ambulance? I mean, that's ludicrous. Many of you know that I recently took a, a new job. When I was cleaning out my desk, I gotta tell you, I was a little shocked, Bill. But truthfully, there was a, a campaign material for a person who was a sitting alder person running for assembly and a labor leader at the time, and his treasurer was Val Schultz. Now, I wonder how many votes Val said, well, I can't, I, I'm gonna recuse myself from this because it wouldn't look right. I think what's good for the goose is good for the gander, and this is the 15 minutes that this deserves is way past due. You should file it. Hang on, there's a couple more. Alderman Berg. Ah, thank you, Your Honor. I think I'm also going to move to file. I think uh, Chief Sayer must be doing his job because he's alienated probably half of his department. He's alienated probably half of this council. So that tells me he's probably doing his job as a department head when that comes about. A uh, uh, couple of thoughts, I think, in terms of, of contributions. Uh, all I can say is Alderman Schultz, uh, the fire department could have dealt with you well had they given you $100. Perhaps that would have been the remedy because uh, that would then force you to recruit yourself in any future discussion. And I think we've given this probably as much weight as it deserves. And for that uh, uh, purpose, I certainly would also move to call the question. Alderman Ports. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I worked with Terry for quite a few years now. Uh, we're kind of opposite sides of the political spectrum, but uh, I've never known Terry not to put the city first. I have the utmost respect for Terry, and um, I, I will vote to file this document. Thank you. Chief Zayer, you had your hand up. Would you like to speak? You don't have to. He's department head. He's department head. Thank you. I just feel uh, compelled to uh, respond. Number one, I think the mayor and Mike Cutts and the city attorney McLean can attest that I refused to go into closed sessions with Orange Cross in the, in the interest that I thought it might be the best for the city to meet with all myself. So, the comments of Val, the Alderman Schultz made that I was in closed sessions. I removed myself from closed sessions, probably five or six of them, whatever, whatever they met. Uh, number two, um, as a department head in, in the Sheboygan Fire Department, I have a duty and obligation of sworn to that flag and to this city to try and promote the welfare of the citizens of the city of Sheboygan. When the firefighters came forth to do that, that was our job. It's been done in 20 or 30 major cities across the state. When this council voted, to go with Orange Cross, succeed, go for a contract with Orange Cross. Myself, my staff, we laid low, we let it happen. We wanted it to happen because that's what you decided, that's what supposedly the citizens that you heard from uh, thought was in the best interest. And when the pres presentations for Orange Cross were done up here, Orange Cross did their, their saying, saying we can respond in three and a half minutes, you know, we can, we can do this, we need two paramedics. And when I see the department head, Documents come from Orange Cross now. They don't need a contract. They want to respond in eight minutes. They want to have, be able to respond with one paramedic and one EMT. I don't think we're on the right playing field at that point. I have an obligation as a department up here to inform aldermen that I don't think that's right for the community. I don't want my mother to be responded to that way, and I want my friends to be responded to that way. And people that I don't know in the city, I feel have a right to be responded to in the last 10 years. Now, I'm not saying Orange Cross is going to do that, but why do they refuse to sign a contract? It's been a lot of pressure on our department, and I am here to say that we've been trying to work together to get a contract, and things that Alderman Schultz said about myself and my department, I feel are not true. And I, there was no, um, he made a comment that there was a, a spreadsheet on, 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 on scene times. 
No, there was a couple of comments by myself. We're concerned about those on-scene times. And myself and Alderman Warner spend, uh, we are on a coalition, uh, on a committee that's supposed to oversight where we think there could be improvements and where there's some problems. That's my job. That's what I've been appointed to do. That's what the mayor put me on the committee and Alderman Warner, to sit here and look at what's in the best interest of this community. And that's what I was sworn to do, and that's what I will do, and no alderman or anybody's going to stop me from doing what I believe is in the best interest of the city of Sheboygan. And I thank you. Okay, Pat, with all that being said on this document, we did get a lot of discussion out of it, didn't we? Would you call the roll, please? Sure. Modi. Aye. Perez. Aye. Hortz. Aye. Schultz. No. Stephan. Aye. Okay. You want to start over? No, that's okay. D. Van Akron. Aye. T. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. He's excused. I, excuse me, I had him crossed off. That's right. <laughs> He's very quiet tonight. Warner. Aye. Wenninger. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Doyle. No. Manny. Aye. 13 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carried. 2062 is submitting an application from John Travis for change in zoning classification property located at 1839 Erie Avenue from Class UI Urban Industrial to Class SO Suburban Office. Plan Commission. 2063 is a resolution directing a public hearing to be held in connection with change of the city's official zoning map for property located at 1839 Erie Avenue. Alderman Doyle. Yes, Your Honor, I move that uh, 2063 uh, be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and seconded a resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 2064 is an ordinance amending the official zoning map of the Sheboygan Zoning Ordinance to change the use district classification of property located at 1839 Erie Avenue. That will go to Planning Commission. Moved and second to adjourn. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. I'm not sure who's second.